Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're going to talk about welding up 4130 chrome molly with not a normal filler rod. We're going to use stainless steel. And you have to ask the question, why stainless steel? Well, I get that question asked to me all the time. Yeah, so I want to address it because there are some hazards, there are some concerns if you are using a stainless steel. Now, unfortunately, what's happened in industry is we do a lot of maintenance welding. Uh, there's filler materials out there that are good for maintenance. They're good for pu putting different materials together. Uh, if you're looking to put 4130 to steel, 4130 to uh, any other kind of a stainless steel, you can do that, but it takes a certain alloy. Now, there's one alloy that's been out there for a long, long time, and it's called Super Missile Weld. And uh, <clears throat> that particular filler material has a high chromium content in it. Now, the average welder wouldn't know that. He just knows it by the name Super Missile Weld. So it has found its way into building uh, uh, racing cars, frames, and even aircraft. So let's address it and see what the good points about this filler is and, and see what the things you need to be concerned. So I do have a sample set up here. This is 4130 Chrome Molly. I do have it pre-tacked. Uh, and I'm going to use this super missile weld rod on it. Now, believe it or not, there is a generic number that you can go to. It's called ER312. It is a stainless steel. Now, by virtue of stainless steel, you at least have 12% chromium in that filler. Chromium is not always a good thing for you. Sure, it's, uh, it's rust resistant. It creates a little toughness. But the beauty of this rod is when you weld with it, it wets out very nicely, it's very clean, very bright, and the overall appearance when you're finished is just fabulous. So let's show what it will do, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, I've, I've already welded up the sides, and uh, I'm just getting ready to do the finish wrap around here in the front. And again, it's just, it welds very nicely. And you can see why uh, fabricators like to use it, because it is just nice and clean. Okay, so I'm tailing out. I don't want to leave a crater crack in here. Okay, well now I've, I've finished welding this 4130 Chrome Molly with stainless steel filler. Uh, the wall thickness here is about uh, 063, so I was using anywhere from 55 to 60 amps. Uh, now here's the real kicker in all this. It welds beautiful. Uh, you can see that the ripple is very clean. Uh, the finish weld looks good. There's no rough edges. There's no undercut. So uh, the welders really favor using this filler material. And it's okay. Uh, you can get some good properties out of it. Uh, you can get good longevity out of it. Unless, and this is a very strong unless, unless you understand that when you penetrate a tube or a flat sheet, on the back side you're going to get these oxides. They're called chromium carbides. Now, these chromium carbides will start cracking. So if you have that condition, for instance, if you're building an aircraft, make sure that you purge the inside of the tube. When I say purge, you need to introduce uh, argon. Um, anyway, argon will uh, prevent those carbides from forming. It's just not always practical. So if it's not practical, go ahead and use the stainless, but just know that it's going to be short-lived. So if you're in the racing industry and you know your frame is only going to be good for a couple of years, tops, then yes, go ahead and use it. But if you want to get real longevity out of this material, go to the ER80SD2. Uh, now, we were talking about the chromium oxides. If you're in an aircraft, uh, you know, why even chance it? Just go ahead and use the ER80SD2. I recently had a gentleman that was using this filler material, and he says, I've never had a problem with it. It's a static part. Uh, it welds nice. Okay, so take a look at your particular application. If you're trying to get high-stress uh, applications out of it, just know it's going to have a shortened life because that brown sugar on the inside. So if you penetrate through a tube, if you can even see the oxides, it's going to crack eventually. So uh, just stay tuned and uh, just want to help you out with that helpful hint. So thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.